Well, here she is. We can get used to this right here. That did not go well. Morning. We're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. Oh, isn't it still looking all shiny and sexy, ain't she? This morning, we're gonna head to the old local import salvage. And I may have told you guys, I think, in the B Dotson. Dotson B210, I don't know, uh, video. Anyways, I come across this wagon, and it's sweet, and I think he priced it kind of fair, and yeah, I didn't have time to check it out that day, so before I pack up a lot of stuff, he's really close to me, so let's just go up there and look it over good and decide if we want to try and strike an old bargain on this baby. Well, here she is. That's where I found her last time, and guys, uh, this baby is complete. All the trim, hubcaps, uh, it ain't it ain't missing nothing. Now, am I absolutely crazy about this wagon? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you and say yes, I'm not. Uh, but do I think someone out there is probably looking for this wagon, especially having everything on it? Probably so. Uh, it looks like it'd clean up really good from what I'm seeing. And yeah, that's that's about the most damage I found right there. So let's check this baby out. Yeah, interior looks pretty good. Not bad. It's definitely the most complete uh, vehicle I guess I found in a salvage yard for sure. Pretty good, decent interior. Seat's a little ripped over there on the old bottom. Door closes good. They could use a little lubrication in the situation. Uh, but check that out. Automatic. Kind of surprised to see that. Figured it'd be a standard. Then let's go up, up front here. Pop the old hood. Hold it with my head. Get the prop ride. Magic. It don't look like he's let anyone take a damn thing off of this, which is awesome. I mean, this all looks really good. Wonder what engine this one has. Probably tell us right there. Yep, L20B. So, that's actually the motor we're after for my truck, but yeah, we wouldn't pull it from this thing. It's way too complete. What do you guys think? everything's there looks cool this thing is priced higher than i usually try to buy cars for but it also is a lot more complete than the cars i usually buy what really is going to count on this is if there's any rust underneath this car so now i get the fun job of trying to lay on this really wet ground and see if i can see any can't really see any rust but also i don't really know where to look on these cars uh, i don't know deadly about them uh, l20b does spin by hand just kind of cranked on it uh cranked on it <laughs> spun it by hand uh these little freaking 13s i think it's the funniest thing but it's awesome still got all the hubcaps on all of them this one's kind of whoopy dude but i uh, i know a guy who can fix that yeah I, I think we need to make him an offer on this thing hopefully not offend him get rain off out of here i'm not i'm i'm not lowballing them so don't think i'm lowballing them but I've talked to old Boyd here before and he agrees. You don't ever want to pay what someone asks for it. You got to get it for a little less. We can get used to this right here. This is a lot nicer than how we've been doing them. <laughs> there you go. She looks pretty rust free. Heck yeah, that's one way to tell. I think we got us a good one. I 
know people are gonna ask about some cars and I'm just gonna let y'all know I'm gonna come out here and me and Boyd's gonna do a walk around video together. So yeah, we'll get y'all some information then. Oh, some old school mini trucking. Maybe Puddin's Fab Shop needs to buy a damn loader. Start go buying these things. Just take a loader with us. <laughs> I am innocent here. I don't know how these Dodsons keep finding me and dragging me home, or dragging me home. Ugh, can't even talk, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm speechless. Let's get this baby unloaded. Then I gotta run the trailer back real quick. Let's let the tow roll a tow. Set of hands. One day I'll have a helper. Never a helper. Hey, get back here. Never a helper as good as old Torola. She's faithful. Well, front two tires are holding air all right. This one's got a decent leak. And then this one just started airing up. The whole car started rolling forward. And then you hear and it let out all the air ah, they haven't been crooked oh, that drive me crazy going down I probably like this thing a lot more than I should I know one thing's for damn certain I do not need to roll a wheel and tire off the Corolla and mock it up to see what this thing would look like lifted on those because, yeah, I could see that becoming a build. No, don't even, we're not doing it. All right, we're gonna actually check this thing out pretty good before we start tinkering with the motor. Uh, yeah, we just gave her a quick glance. Let's, uh, let's open her up. That tag says 2009. So it ain't, it ain't been that long sitting actually. 2009 is when I graduated. These side panels, just freaking sweet. This actually mounts underneath the car, I noticed. Pick it up with that right there. I may want to leave that right there. <laughs> Let's see. Ski alarm. Alerts driver when skier is down. Wonder what color these were supposed to be. Cause it's just like the raw plastic now i'd be scared to take them off we got the new testament we got our service 1977 man this is like the seventh vehicle i own that's 1977. i see the number 77 so much i put it on my damn hand so this is the same year as the old truck all right that's pretty cool Oh, only thought that was missing it right there. Always afraid to open these. Oh. Give these to Ashley. She's always using tissues. Another scraper. I don't even have one of these in the shop. Do now. Got your recommended tire pressures right there. Lifesavers. <laughs> Old owner used to have some stank breath. Must have, because he got some floss too. Glasses cleaner. Oh, cover for something. There's another one right there I just noticed. And we got an extra fuel cap. Hmm. All the keys are just right in it. It sucks the top of this is all cracked up. But I'm pretty impressed with her. Ooh, look at that mirror job right there. Who's that handsome guy? I didn't even look at the headliner when we were at the salvage yard. That thing is perfect. Man. Like these, I was worried was all going to be all rusted out. And it actually looks all super solid. Hands down, nicest thing we've picked up so far. <laughs> Pop.
start with an oil check. Definitely full. It smells like fresh oil is what it smells like. I'm just playing. I don't do that. Spark plugs don't look terribly old. Like I said, this is a L20B 110 horse. Got all the powers. Full radiator on this thing looks quite a bit bigger than the one for the truck, or am I wrong? Well, maybe about the same. Hell, I don't know. Looks like we got some smog BS. All right. And then here was part of the problem of why it got parked. Something to do with the carburetor. That son of a, you know what, has to weigh freaking 50 pounds. The carburetor don't look terrible. Looks don't mean nothing though. We'll get our bark out of there. Guess we get our weeds out. I see we got some rat poop in here, but luckily it don't look like a rat's nest or nothing. Hell, this is the first one that ain't had old pudding possum in it. Uh, so far, probably. Unless they got one hit over in this fender wheel or something. We're gonna disconnect the fuel hose. We are gonna throw a battery in it. And real quick, I'm not gonna change the oil before we crank on it. And I know that's gonna make people mad, but that oil looks fine. I am gonna pull the plug to make sure there ain't no water or something hiding in there down at the bottom, just in case. <sighs> Holy hell. Hercules changed the oil on this damn thing. That did not go well. <laughs> it's pretty dark oil. Don't smell bad though. Definitely no water in there. There's some fuel in it. I can smell a little bit of fuel for sure. All right. Well, if ain't this old girl's lucky day, I just called the O'Reilly's and yeah, they have an oil filter. So I think I lied to you guys. I think we will go ahead and change the oil on this uh, because I ain't keeping it, you know, so whoever ends up with it, wants it done right, I'm sure. Uh, we can still disconnect this stuff. About to have to go pick up the girls from school. And then after that, I'll go get the oil stuff. We might get a new fuel filter and just replace all the stuff right here. And then we might clean up these battery cables and throw the old battery in it and see what powers on and don't power on. And there went my screwdriver. Actually, let's pull off these old plug wires and we will pull the plugs and we will spray some looby dooby down in her. That way it can at least sit a little bit before we crank on it. A little's better than none, they always say. Even though I don't think anyone's ever said that. It's old story time with L20B spark plugs. We need to name this wagon for one because it's definitely worthy of a name. This thing looks like, <laughs> this is one of them wagons like you expect to get picked up in by your Aunt Dorothy or something. You got like four brothers and sisters and she makes you all pile in in this little thing. Hey kids, it's your Aunt Dorothy. Your mom sent me to pick you up. Get in the wagon. Aunt Dorothy, that may be what we named the wagon. <laughs> what a terrible name. But is it? Is it terrible? Those things are brand spanking new. Kill shot from way back from Alabama. Let's see. Oh yeah, since that uh, dipstick for the old transmission wanted to pull itself, let's check it. Pretty red. That thing's different than a steel line right there. Preformed, little quarter inch hose, little babies. All right, uh, let's throw the battery in. Ow! Watch your thumbnails. Get the old poop sucker out real quick. Ah! 
We'll clean the rest of that up later real good. I just didn't want to start smashing rat turds with the, my old battery. Made it back from the O'Reilly's. We'll change the oil real quick. I went to Atwood's. They're out of all my Harvest King stuff. They didn't have no spray lube, no nothing hardly. I don't know what the deal is there. Best thing Atwood's had was old spicy beef sticks. The little stubbies. I like my beef sticks like I like my dots and beds and my load stars. It's a goofy little bob bed I built that everyone hates, so it kind of makes me like it more. There she is, the little stubby. People are gonna think I have a thing for stubby things with that old <laughs> load star and this old goofball. It is about 4.45, so people are getting off work. That means it's Revathon 9000 off the highway here, so yeah. All right, let's get this damned old oil out of this. Oh, there we go. Make sure to get it on your hand for the second time. I think my face is probably better than watching the oil filter. <sighs> it's going. Crunchy. Ooh, Wicks, good brand. That baby wasn't that old. Old filter looks better than this cheap piece of crap. All right. Fresh filter. Throwing the old oil pan plug back in this baby and notice something interesting. These had to be added, right? We got plate welded to the top and bottom. So maybe this thing came with the limited edition long travel beef up kit. Someone must have uh, had a bad experience with these lower arms. Aunt Dorothy probably broke them ramping the speed bumps, picking up the kids at school. So the next set, her husband, Uncle Phil, he probably beefed those babies up. They don't look bent at all. Nothing else looks messed with. So, <clears throat> uh, what oil do you put in these? Of course, I had one in the truck, but I don't remember. Hell, it's been too long. I also don't remember how much it holds. So, we'll figure it out. I just grabbed 10W40. Maybe. Probably tells you the the quantity and the type right there. I just don't know how to read Japanese. We are about to make Gabe's day. Gabe Onan was so tired of seeing me just jump a wire that he bought one of these starter switch buttons and sent it to me. He's been waiting for me to use it. So here you go, Gabe. And then also Country Boy Gas Garage. He did send me a couple stickers out, so thank you for that. If anyone likes to send me stupid stuff and wants to say it in the video, uh, not that that stuff is stupid. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded mean. Uh, the P.O. box is down in the description of this video. What a loser. What a winner. What a stud. Dun, dun, dun. Putting those things black and red are not a good idea. So I'm supposed to put one on the positive, one on the negative, and just squeeze the button and see what happens, right? That should be our wire for our starter solenoid right there. And we're gonna put the black one down on there. Wrong. Switch. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. Now I done learned from the truck video that, uh. Stuff will spray out of here after you spray them down in there. <laughs> Dumbass! Damn right it'll crank and it'll also shoot all your liquids everywhere. We just got hit with some uh, Marvel Mystery Oil PB Blast WD-40, AKA Pot County Kool-Aid. And when we hit this magic button right here, this thing should spin over. Oh, she'll crank like hell. <laughs> that thing's boogieing. What are you going to do? Tumble? Go show them how it's done, baby. Okay. Okay. Do good. Love you. Let me throw the plugs back in it. I'm going to give these things the old brake clean and dry them off with some air. and Yeah, then we'll slap them back in. This one needs opened up just a hair. 
I also don't know what to gap these two. So I'm just gonna match this one to the other three and assume that this one just got smashed somehow. You might cheat a little bit. You're only cheating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> don't cheat, Bill. Do the full ride. Now he's gonna be on that bike ride and all he's gonna hear is me saying that in the back of his head and he's gonna do the whole thing. Oh, got those puppies tight. Throw our old plug wires back on. I know this one was one, so we can check it off of that. There we go. Yeah, we're right, we're right. We good, it's all good in the hood, baby. Now we're gonna see if we got spark by chance, so I'm gonna take my little 12 volt jumper wire here. Go to the 12 volt side on the coil. Now our coil should be hot. Oop. Something's hot cause something's smoking. All we did was hook up 12 volts to the 12 volt side of our coil. We start getting smoke out of here. Woo, unleash the smoke show. Where are we smoking at? Why are we smoking off of our ground? Looks fairly new. Not really dirty. Uh, we're not smoking now. Let me get these obnoxious things out of the way. Maybe that coil somehow trying to pull so much damn power are those jumper cables at the ground? No. I'm sure it's something simple and I'm just an idiot. We are obviously back feeding and turning on some relays. What do we have on? Something has to be on. Man, we should hit this button and if it's sparking, we'll see spark. No spark. And we didn't have no spark because that plug wire wasn't even on the cap. It had fell off, so let's try again. No spark. Start at the coil first. Make sure we're getting spark from it. No spark from the coil. Go back in here. I guess actually pay attention to our points this time. open oh, in that's where we were just smoking probably a dirty connection right in there we should even just be able to jump across there with a screwdriver and arc that coil off and we're not doing nothing should have had the camera rolling everyone's always making fun of my old shady lift she did the job just fine now we got long beds doing front flips. I don't know what the hell's going on around here. The hell, they didn't buckle. Easy. Easy peasy. There she goes. Thanks to PJ for that free truck. And uh, thanks to old Justin for the free Datsun because selling both of those off is what got us a sweet wagon old Aunt Dorothy in the first place. Hi, and welcome back to Take Your Ass to Class. This morning we're gonna start with an experiment. <laughs> Scared myself. <laughs> if you're like me and you struggle with the English language, all you have to do is sound out the word. Also, if you're like me and you struggle to get marker off your dry erase board, this Get Gone Degreaser by Sweet Patina does the job great. You can use that promo code on the screen. Uh, negative, negative. Got an absolute terrible connection of just a few strands. We're going to the negative of the coil. Got that positive. So yesterday, whenever I put the jumper cables on, 
uh, it immediately smoked that bad connection in there and i'm just curious if we can recreate that with a coil that i know is good or it makes me wonder if we are having a short in that other coil this is as simple as it is so let's see what happens nothing happens which is what should have happened yesterday now we're going to go back to aunt dorothy and we're going to isolate that coil and test it kind of a similar setup uh, just where we can see if the coil is working at all and then if it is working at all we're going to find out where we're not triggering it at we got our orange wire going to our positive side just took this green wire and added it to our negative side and i took the coil wire and we're going to put her in here where maybe we can see if we can get it to spark so when your coil's energized with that 12 volts when the ground breaks is when it'll release the spark out the coil wire which is why your point sitting in there tapping like that is just shooting constant sparks so we should be able to take that green wire and you know kind of flick it off of a ground and create a spark if the coil's good hard to pick it up on the camera but that baby's sparking but if we can get it to spark with that ground wire we should be able to get it to spark with the damn points and just how that sparks there uh with all this hooked back up we should spark across there with the screwdriver still have our 12 volts on our coil uh hook the factory wire back up and have our wire hooked back up here like i said when we go across there we should be grounding that see how we're not getting any sparks down in there so we're losing continuity somewhere between here and here now my old meter ain't the best it's still hanging in there gets the job done three out of seven days anyhow uh, but my grandma who used to wire aircraft uh gave me this when she had retired and i've had it for a long time touch those babies together just to test it if these things don't get pushed in all the way or like this one it the connection had broke up in there i had to solder that uh you'll chase your tail because those things aren't connected well i didn't mean to rhyme first thing we're going to do we're going to check for continuity just between the base of this distributor and our ground post over here all right so we know our, our distributor is grounded next thing we're going to do is we're going to go from the base of this distributor we're going to go over to this little junction block where all the wires meet up in the distributor and you can see we have nothing well we have nothing because our points aren't touching which is why i'm trying to jump it across with a screwdriver so let's put a screwdriver in there and make those touch go that junction little junction block again and hey we got some continuity so that was from this screw to this junction block now we're going to go from this screw to this side and then to this side good on that go to this other tab continuity there i'm gonna just take this wire off this slide and tab go to that and well 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 what in the no continuity do we have going on here Oop. baby come back so this is just a screw that goes through here has a nut as a back end plate and it pinches that unit in there now it smoked started melting on this side so we're just going to assume it had a bad dirty connection in between here see if we can take it apart and clean it up use old little file here and get some of this real rough stuff off here it's like freaking surgery so precise here's how to lose a finger The little nut plate's definitely fine, so let's try putting all this back together and see if we uh, got continuity now. Well, 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 look who has continuity now. Now guys, these numbers are all over the place, but mind you, this weeder, this weeder, that's a worn out meter, a weeder. This meter's plumb worn out, these leads definitely need replaced, but we are getting continuity out of that thing now. Which means, when we hook this wire back up, it should be going over there and we should get some sparking 
and you can definitely see we are getting some sparking every time we put a ground on this we're back feeding something else probably should just take a wire from here straight to here and be done with the back feeding green wire just going to the negative because like i said every time i touch this you can hear it back feeding so i don't want to worry about all that stuff right now ground straight to there orange straight to hot that's how easy this should be uh and like i said you know we should be able to spark it across there now so what's this all mean and why did we have a smoke show yesterday well the coil could have a short in it uh it is working a little bit not super hot but we also know that wiring back feeds other stuff that means the points had to have been closed where it was providing a ground for sure and uh that dirty connection in there you know was the weakest point so that's what started to melt uh so something had to be you know shorting somewhere now it could be from back feeding it could be from the coil we'll find that out in the future now we're gonna give these things the old Mortsky flick. Oh, put down in there in that dark carburetor, maybe you can see. Let's see if we're getting spark all the way out to a plug and then maybe we'll just put some gas down her damn throat, make her drink and yeah. You can keep the little fingernail files and stuff. If you're doing this out in the old field, which is, I usually don't have them here in the shop. But these Craftsman screwdrivers that aren't the greatest, they still have those lines on the side. And I think they're just about right for scuffing some of this stuff and kind of cleaning it up. So, let's throw a rotor back on. Throw our cap back on. It's pretty clean. I'm not going to scuff on it. Pop our coil wire back onto this baby. All right, coil's hot. With any luck, we're gonna be sparking out there somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah. We've got spark, folks. Well, 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 look what I found. I'll be damned if I didn't just find a bottle of some Get Her Done 91. Got the choke kind of propped open with the old screwdriver. And let's see if she wants to play nice. Give her some get her done 91 down the hole. Oh yeah, she wants to run. Damn it. Come on, screwdriver, you got one job. Let me give her a decent spray. May gave her too much spray. She's trying. Oh, that's missing a pin. That's good. Hmm. Now, I do remember these carburetors are weird. <laughs> Maybe y'all can see all the fuel down in this one. Yeah, I don't remember exactly how these babies work. I remember the one on the 620 is doing the same thing. This side will fill up, but it won't actually feed down into the intake. I'm gonna pull number one plug and just verify this firing order. It'll make me feel better about it, I guess. We didn't verify it. Don't take long to do, might as well do it. We know what was alleged to be the problem, but you never really know. Spark plugs do look new, so you never know. Put my finger plugger in there and we'll just bump her over till we know we hit compression stroke. Right there, pretty damn close. Got a notch right there on our pulley. I'm gonna finish turning this around by hand. I know it's hard to see that baby down there, but I've got her dead on zero. Pop a cap. Blop, blop. All right. 
And we are definitely pointing right here. And that is going to number one. And then, don't this thing spin this way? Yep. One, three, four, and two. So our firing order is good. Well, damn it, Aunt Dorothy. Yeah, I thought you were gonna fire right off, old girl. Now, I know these carburetors are junk and we could be having an issue because I don't really know how these carburetors, like I said, kind of function internally. So we may not be giving it enough fuel or air through that thing. I would think we could get it off a bottle. A couple things we can mess with really easy and check just for fun. Uh, throw a mark down here on our old distributor. Right here is where you adjust your timing. So I'm gonna mark it. And we can kind of wiggle with our timing some and then those plugs are really easy to get to so just for fun we can do a compression test on this thing and see where she's at anyhow so there's that kind of interesting three and four are nice and wet and one or two are nice and dry it could be me okay guys i could be the problem here 170 165 on number one. About a buck 80. So 165, 180. Go for three. Just under 180. Four matches three, just a hair under. So we got about 175, 175. 185 and then 165. Number one is definitely the lowest. Now we don't have to pull a valve cover to make sure all the valves are opening. I'd like to leave that valve cover cover on. So that's another good thing of just doing the compression test. Let you know where you're at. We know all of our valves are doing what they're supposed to be doing. We know we had two wet plugs, two dry plugs, kind of point us in the right direction. No regrets. That's my credo. That's my credo. No regrets. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to smoke a freaking spark plug to Alabama. Quit over torquing those things. Got my tin mill down in there and loosen that baby. Just where we can mess with timing. But also show you guys how with that mark there, you know, we can set it back right there where it was. Now, because I don't know what side we're supposed to be feeding in, how this carburetor works, uh, I, yeah, you know, I'd probably benefit from pulling this carburetor off where I can understand how the hell it's functioning. I had to go sit on the old porcelain throne and I text my buddy Mortsky and I told him uh, kind of what I, I'm saying, you know what I mean? He asked about compression. I said, it's got some of that good old compression. Uh, anyhow, he had a good idea. Because I told him, I, I don't know that we're getting fuel down to one and two. He said, get one of the intake valves open. And why don't you back feed some compressed air and see if we can get it up through the carburetor. I think that's a pretty good idea. And I don't mind pulling this. It don't take long. And the good thing is, whoever ends up with this car in the future, well, they're going to know what they got. They know the compression now. We're gonna have a look-see underneath the old valve cover. Four. Woo! Hot damn Tarzan. I think we got a rebuilt motor, guys. What do y'all think? How clean is that baby? All the way down to the bottom. I mean, I honestly don't know how to tell uh, other than we got some marks going on. I don't know if those are original. Uh, but damn, look how clean everything is. Uh, so here's our intake valve. I just cranked this over until we have our intake open for number one. So now we're gonna pull that plug and try to shoot some air up that away. Bought some quarter inch fuel hose yesterday. 
that just so happens to fit pretty good on the old uh, Air Mover 650 model. And uh, this fits kind of tight in the threads. Should be enough to push some air. Oh yeah, we're definitely getting air through there. Now I got the intake open on number two and we're just gonna check it since we're in here. Let's have a little fun. Oh yeah. Guys, I think we may have found a hidden gem in that junkyard. Look at that valve cover gasket. We don't even gotta worry about replacing it. Now we ain't got the time to make this baby perfect, but I did have to clean her up a little bit. A little sweet patina degreaser and some steel wool. Put a little cap back on. Oh yeah. Who does that? Is that Italians? Hell, I don't know. Never done it in my life till now. Well, I thought we might get lucky and she might just still bust off, but uh, yeah, let's pull a carburetor. That way we at least understand how that carburetor's supposed to be functioning, because I don't know diddly do about them. Sure is a lot of smoke in here. I wonder if our old exhaust is plugged up by chance. I don't want to cut it, just in case. Well, the exhaust don't feel hot anywhere. I really think we should be able to get this thing run off the bottle. Yeah, uh, it's trying to half run. Yeah, we're just gonna try hooking up the fuel system. Show you what we got going on. I just took the supply and the return into this can, filled her up. We are getting some fuel pressure. Uh, if you block that, it will come out the return. But that don't necessarily mean it's gonna make pressure. So I'm just gonna sit here and crank on this thing, see if I can start to get fuel out of the carburetor at all. I could see the bowl fill up. I did do some reading on these carburetors and they do have an idle shut off solenoid or something. Yeah. Maybe y'all can hear that clicking. So. Did y'all see that? Okay, so let me explain to you why we gotta be careful here. It's because my metal can just arced off the starter. And when I pulled that old return hose out of that can, some gas kind of fell down around here. So that gas just kind of caught on fire. Not my proudest moment. Threw a rag down there this time. Be sure to have fire extinguishers if you're gonna do stuff like this. We've got spark, we know we've got compression. The only thing acting funny is fuel. And I'm trying to adjust on stuff, but like I said, I don't know much about this. Uh, trying to fit, fuel it up with that electric fuel pump is just blowing way too much in there, so we can't use that. The factory fuel pump is doing no pressure, so we're pretty much forced right now with this carburetor to try to do it off a bottle, and it just ain't working out for us. 
Dad was just here. Yeah. I lost spark for the first time, so I just rigged up a new little setup to show them it did have spark because it did have spark and it still just stumbled. Uh, I managed to track down the Weber carburetor that come off the old Datsun L20 from out back. I had ran this with an adapter kit. Problem is, I don't have said adapter kit. I don't know this is any good. It was last ran whenever I had my damn truck on the road. I just know we need a damn adapter. When everything's said and done, the adapter's probably gonna look like a little two inch tunnel ram. You damn right, baby. I did make sure to move all the fuel away from over here because I don't want two fires today. Hit her with some instant chrome and we're good to go, baby. And I mean instant. I just sprayed that stuff less than a minute ago and it's dry to the touch. You know, I put that on all my performance parts, like the, the wheels on the front of the Lodestar. What else did I paint with it? Oh, the front wheels on the Chevy Love. Sitting right and sitting tight, 12 inches out back. Hell, you should have known. I hit the front stillies with some rattle can chrome. Please, I beg you, do not think I like this, okay? Like, if Puddin's Fab Shop wants to be known for his fab work, this is not it. This is literally what I can slap together because I just want to hear this motor just hum for a second and I'll be happy. Be sure to whip you up a good cardboard gasket out of old pizza box before you put that carb on, the old Pop County Tunnel Ram. Hi, and welcome to another morning of ass whippings. <laughs> Gosh, man, I thought this was gonna be the easiest one we come across. We can get that junkyard Dotson running. I didn't have no damn uh, spark plugs in it in the junkyard for 24 years, no problem. And then this thing that looks cherry and has good compression, yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to show y'all this morning when it's still kind of dark in here where y'all can see is the spark because I know during the day it's hard to get it, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, last night, here's what went down. I got a Mount Carb More installed right there and I thought it'd be really cool to run it off the fuel pump where we could actually try to atomize the fuel some use you know make the carburetor do its damn job instead of using the old spray bottle so i hook up the setup my old true fuel tank with my electric fuel pump slide that on there hook up the wires and do y'all know what happened well if you're a weber guy you already caught it uh that front cover is missing off of that and i'm not sure what that is but i can tell you without it fuel just shoots out straight right there so fuel started spraying everywhere and you know what? Well, I was done, damn it. I had enough. Uh, I, I figured I'd hook that up, and if I got it where it'd spray, I was going to show you guys we're going to try to bust this thing off, and that happened, and I said, you know what? Enough's enough. In the video, you'll probably see a couple times that spark managed to jump off to the side, and that made me pay attention to the gap. Now, a gap is something we should have really paid attention to uh, the first time we had the plugs out. And one was kind of smashed in far, and I said, hell, I'll just match it to the rest. You know, just not thinking. I don't have a spark plug gapper right now. I don't know what happened to mine. So I don't know what mine were gapped to, because what I'm doing is I'm using my uh, set of calipers here, and I'm measuring stuff. And this thing right here is close to 32. Uh, so I gapped them to this. Now this could go in there and there's a little bit of playroom, but it's not like those things were set to like 44 or something crazy. They may have been at like 38-ish. What I'm trying to tell you guys is this gap 
could have been our problem the whole time. So don't be a dummy like me. And it couldn't be our problem at all. Uh, we still got to see if this thing's going to fire off this morning. I'll swap the battery that I charged overnight in. Uh, please. Please be good to me. <laughs> if not, we're going to spray it down with all this and just throw a match on you. Come to daddy. Go, baby. Go, 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 go. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah, baby. Hey, it ain't smooth. It ain't the smoothest thing. But damn it, we'll take it. After the ass whippings we've been taking all day yesterday. I'm trying to check this timing. Make sure it's exactly where it used to be. This thing's just a pain in my rear. I can't really get it to run off the bottle any more than what we got it to before. That's a good motor. All right, I've got something going on with the, the spark and the fuel. As far as internals, uh, that's a good motor right there. I'm gonna plant on doing a full ignition tune-up, which I was gonna do anyhow. I just wanted to get it run on this stuff. And I'm gonna order an actual Weber kit for this thing with the actual adapter plate and not a piece of junk Weber carb that's been sitting and parts robbed off of. Here's the deal, guys. I didn't think all my parts would be in today. And every part came in besides the distributor cap and i just could not freaking help it so you know what i did i threw the new points and condenser in there because i mean these things are pretty rough looking so this wire kind of burned up during the short process thought we'd start there and it was trying a lot better you could tell it made a big difference but I still couldn't really just get it to idle as soon as I would try to start it. Now this time, when I was pulling the rotor off, I noticed that this guy's kind of wiggly, wiggles around. Uh, I bought a new one. I don't think that should wiggle. Maybe it should have some play. I don't know. Uh, the new one does not, and I slapped it in. So let me show you what's going on inside of here now. It's a new set of points, a new condenser, and a new rotor. So we're having uh, spark issues the whole time, basically. Uh, now, I did grab a plug wire set and I did grab some plugs anyways. I did grab a new coil. Uh, let's just go ahead and throw everything on here real quick because it's all gonna end up on it anyways. You damn right. That's how we kind of want her to sound. Now that's going through, you know, mount carb more there. Just wait till we get a good carburetor set up on this thing and actually time it. I bet she'll purr like a kitten. Well, there you have it. We finally got it running. Now, not near to the point I thought we were gonna be at after these couple of days, but welcome to reality, everybody. It ain't all like it. Oh, bet, bet. <laughs> I can't even talk. It's not like television. Um, sometimes shit just goes wrong, all right? So we still got Mount Carbmore to fire up. That thing's absolutely ridiculous. If somebody will run it on their vehicle and cut a hole in their hood, I'll send it to you. Uh, don't expect to be impressed by it. Uh, you may notice I no longer have the old start switch. And yesterday that thing hung up, kept my starter uh, cranking when I didn't want it cranking, had to rip it off. When I tried to pop the button out the top, it literally shot out the top and it broke into about three pieces. So I do appreciate you sending that to me, Gabe, but it didn't really make it through one, will it run? It was very nice when I did have it. Uh, it's a lot more convenient. I should get a good one. Uh, but I hope y'all enjoyed. Now the plan is, I already ordered tires. I did order the Weber carb kit. 
We're gonna clean this thing up. We're gonna keep working at it till we get this damn thing on the road. And Aunt Dorothy's gonna shine up nice. I can already tell. So if you're on Instagram, I'm on there at Putin's Fab Shop. And don't forget, sitting on your ass, won't finish your project. Go to Tom. Go to Tom. Hey, Peach.